Hey, this is Dan from Music Explorer. We're here today with well-known saxophonist John Scarpula. He's currently playing with Diana Ross. But prior to that, John's got such an extensive career playing with so many different musicians and so many different styles of music, including funk, jazz, rock, pop, Latin, salsa, you name it, he's done it. He's played with so many artists too. He's played with Cindy Lauper, Billy Joel, B.B. King, Tower of Power, Ricky Martin, you name it, he's played with he even got to play the last two shows at Shea Stadium with Billy Joel at the last play at Shea. You can catch that on DVD. Hey, John, how are you doing today? Doing great, brother. That's great. So you've got quite an extensive career playing saxophone. I mean, uh, so let me just start off in the beginning. How you get you into playing saxophone? How, what was your interest there? Thankfully, and I, I, I name this guy all the time, but my elementary school music teacher, this guy, Tom Colabella. And it's a guy that I still actually do gigs with. He's a retired, he's retired now, but uh, he's a drummer, you know, back in the day when there was no computer. He opened up the Encyclopedia Britannica to the saxophone page and it was like a, you know, fold out. The whole family of saxophones like laying on a, on a red velvet blanket or something like that. And I looked at it and it was like, that was it, man. Was Tommy Doris Orchestra your first uh, taste of getting out into the limelight? While I was in college at Berkeley, I was in a number of bands. So like I was playing in local bands in Boston. But yeah, I graduated college and the the uh, the head of the music department there or the woodwind department at the time was Joe Viola. Um, these bands, various bands, especially jazz bands, would they would reach out to Joe like, hey, man, uh, you know, we, we got an opening. Um, but I literally graduated and like two weeks later, Joe called me. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like doing great. He's like, Tommy Dorsey band's looking for, you know, for an alto player. Are you interested? I was like, absolutely. Then you got into the funk in, in New York. I did. How you know, did that happen? When I decided to leave Boston, my family was in New York and my ties were in New York and I knew I was always coming back to New York. So at some point around 1990, out in Setauket, and there's this big sign, 10 piece funk band playing the music of uh, Tower of Power, Funk Philharmonic. I'm gonna go hear this band tonight, Funk Philharmonic. And, and then I went up to one of the sax players and I just gave him my card. And maybe two weeks later, they called me. Just, uh, we need a sax player tonight. Uh, and I remember it was the bass player that called me, Rich Ebler. Come down for the sound check and uh, see how you do. <laughs> like it was, I wasn't home like, I was home a couple of weeks. That's great. <laughs> Immediately gave me credibility in New York, like, you know, in this in kind of tri-state area. You know, a couple of years later, I got the call from Tower of Power. And I got a call from from Emilio Castillo, so the leader of yeah. Power Power. And you didn't and, believe it. <laughs> and so now, yeah, it's one of those ones. When I got the call from Emilio Castillo, I thought for sure it was my friend Sean Gillen calling me and literally jerking my chain again. Like, hey, he's like, this is Emilio Castillo from Tower of Power. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> Hung up the phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> the phone was again. He goes, John. Like it, you know, very, like very calm and collected the way Emilio is. This is Emilio Castillo from Tower of Power. I'm like, Emilio, I'm, I'm so sorry, man. I, I, you know, <laughs> and I start telling him the story of my friend Sean, because now I'm all like, I'm all worked up. Oh, but my friend Sean, you know, he calls me and he does this all the time to me. And he, he's like, John, <laughs> calm down. Like, you know, I was like, you only have till 99. New Year's Eve, I think 2000. So like a little over two years. So I got off a tower in 2000. How did you get to be in Moving Out? Being in uh, Funk Philharmonic, you know, again, gave me this credibility locally. Like I was, even though I was out on the road with Tower of Power, I was still doing Funk Philharmonic gigs in between and whatever else I could squeeze out. Um, you know, so I was, you know, kind of had a name for myself here in New York. Now, Tommy Burns was Billy Joel's musical director for like 20 years. He's still in the band. He's like the co-musical director now. I don't really know which hat he wears. Um, Billy gave him, like he charged him with the 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 job of, uh, you know, putting together the musicians that were gonna be on the band for, for Billy's show. He called Kevin Osborne, who was the trombone player. He knew Kevin from a bunch of different projects and Kevin recommended me right away. Did you feel any pressure? Every night it was pressure at the, there were two no, two moments during the night, to me that felt like it was pressure. Um, playing scenes from an Italian restaurant, the very end of it, there's just this lick that you, it, it goes over the top of the range of the instrument into the altissimo, what it's, what it's called. And uh, you don't want to fuck it up. 
right? <laughs> no, you don't want to miss that note, man. So it's just at the very end, and there were there were plenty of better saxophone players than me that stepped all over their weenies trying to play that part, and they were guys that you know practiced the hell out of it, like myself. So like right before that lick, I would like don't you know. I would say I, I got it 99.98% of the time. Yeah. Usually Billy was standing, like I was all the way uh, on one side of the stage and that was where the VIPs would come in. So sometimes when we would get to that end, when we were gonna go play New York State of Mind, the, Billy would be standing right next to me. I mean, there were a couple of times where he would just reach up and grab my foot. <laughs> and we, you know, we got earbuds in and we're, you know, I'm focused on <laughs> All of a sudden, someone's grabbing my ankle, and I look, and there's Billy like standing next to me. And he's, you know, and the mouth, like, and I could say this. I think he's like, "Don't fuck it up," you know. <laughs> Talked that out for what the whole the whole time, right? Six years. The whole time, man. Uh, it was you know, it was like four years, you know, a little over four years from when we started. Then we went on hiatus. Then the three and a half years, or three and a quarter years, that we actually ran in Chicago and then ran in uh, in New York. Michael Judas has his band Big Shot. So you're still in Big Shot? I'm still in Big Shot. I don't do 100% of the gigs because um, I'm doing, playing with, you know, other artists. I mean, my main gig now for the last 11, I'm going on 11 years now, is with Diana Ross. She had made a decision that she wanted, her band was from LA. So she wanted like some New York guys in the band. So I went in with a horn section um, with Ozzy Melendez from the Funk Philharmonic, Barry Danilian from Tower of Power, and we went in and we auditioned for her. And she's like, okay, you guys are gonna do the gig. And uh, So we added uh, five strings, four horns, and a synth player. Then myself and, and Ozzy Melendez, we became the her, her arrangers, basically. So now I became the you know featured sax player. So um, the contractor because I contracted these musicians so that I've ended up you know arranging for other bands and contracting for lots of other bands you, you know? got to do the last show at Shea Stadium oh and I did the last shows because there were two there were actually two and then the DVD was a combination of all of it it was the, the list of musicians that were coming out to play on each one of those nights was just like hanging backstage with uh, Goth Brooks you know like and he was hanging with us a lot uh, Tony Bennett was actually hanging with us a lot when I think of the guys that were hanging. You know, we were in the room with Mellencamp. Steven Tyler, Steven Tyler was hanging with us, which was really cool. And, and now we weren't supposed to play with with, with Steven Tyler, but we we looked at each other like if if we're gonna play with him, we gotta come up with an arrangement really quick. You guys are playing with me. You guys are, like he decided on the sound check that we were gonna play with him, which worked out nicely in our favor. There's a hundred great stories from that show. but. So we weren't allowed, we, we had a sign, at, you know, a in, in non-disclosure saying that we weren't going to take pictures backstage. They hired people to take pictures. Um, they wanted to be in control of what was going on. But, you know, we were sneaking pictures anyway. Tough luck. Uh, but now the artists, so now Tony Bennett's got his camera. Steven Tyler's got his camera. <laughs> right? All the artists, they all have their cameras, you know. So Goth Brooks is hanging on us and he's wearing his, you know, he's got, he's like an official Met. Or like, he's got a Met, you know, he's got a Met jersey that says, you know, Brooks on the back, you know. <laughs> and he hung with the horn section a lot. The moment is coming, and but we know, we know there's two living Beatles, all right? So there's two. There's, there's Ringo, and so it could have been Ringo because there's the connection with Billy and Billy's connection with the Beatles, or it could be Paul McCartney. But we're not, they didn't tell us who it's gonna be. We're on stage and we're playing and it's the last show. So didn't I don't think it happened the first night. I think it happened the second night. So this is it. If he doesn't show up tonight, it ain't going to happen. So we hear now, we're hearing, okay, somebody's coming. But we, we still don't know. They don't want to tell us. That's Paul McCartney. So he flies into Kennedy, and they close the Van Wick. And they, like they, like a police escort right to the back of Shea Stadium. <laughs> And the limo pulls up, you know, and it's a giant stretch limo. It pulls up right backstage. So it's like right at the, you know, the ramp, at the bottom of the ramp. And the door opens and out comes Paul. And McCartney walks out and they do Saw Her Standing There. So now all the artists that are there, you know, and it's, it, it, it's you know, it's Goth Brooks. And, you know, like I'm thinking of who I'm hanging with. And, and Steven Tyler and, and Tony Bennett. 
we're all we're all together on the side of the stage and we're not supposed to have cameras but now you're going to tell Steven Tyler and, and Garth Brooks and and Tony Bennett you're going to tell Tony Bennett he can't bring a camera so now Steven Tyler and Tony Bennett are they're elbowing each other because they're trying to get pictures of Billy and Paul that are up there performing and it's it's hysterical at some point like everybody grabbed Steven Tyler and were like, come on, man, it's Tony Bennett. You got to let Tony get some pictures, you know? So like Tony took a few pictures and then, and then Steven Tyler got his pictures. But it, it was just the moment, even for those people, you know, so f for, for Tony Bennett, it, like for those guys to be backstage and now on the side of the stage watching this moment that's never happened before, Billy and, and Paul on stage, yeah. even they wanted pictures of this shit because yeah. they were just like, holy shit, this is one of those moments. What are you doing right now since uh, we're all home? <laughs> I've done maybe 12 sessions here at the house. Uh, I've done two projects with guys from the Average White Band um, and Brent Carter, the lead singer uh, of Average White Band. You know, I just did a gig on Thursday night uh, with Big Shot, with, with Mike Del Judas and Big Shot, town of Oyster Bay Beach, parking lot. It was like 6,000 cars, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful to have some gigs. You know, that's where it's at right now. Well, I really appreciate you talking with us, Music Explorer, today. <laughs> nice, Dan. It's been fun talking. What about you, folks?